Greetings unto the house of Yisrael Reach. That we Yisrael is sitting here to and to express a certain teaching. I know that I spoke on not in details and depths concerning the word Jew or Jewish Judaism. And I want to bring out the details of that teaching in a way that is certainly profound. In the days of my forefathers, the parenting, they did not have access to the type of things that we have today. And so they taught with a bit of ignorance in the sense they didn't know. But there is no reason that we don't know or have all the tools to understand anything in this world we do let me preference that i recall in the 20 hundreds when the hebrew israelites it was a decree that everything would be halted 20 hundreds same thing with 2019 the prophecies and they boast so religiously that they are the true Jews, a word that is not even a hybrid word. It is false, it is a lie, and it is certainly delusional. And many of them, I can say this because I understand their speech, they have not done the research that is adequate to make sure that this lie that they promote because it is a violent lie. And the people buy that, especially those that identify as Hebrew Israelites. But I will go to scholarship of those that say they are the Jews and their teachers and lawyers and philosophers. I always love to utilize a scholarship. If a white man says something, I want his scholarship. If a man of my hue, I want that scholarship. And I want the scholarship of those that call themselves Jews. But I want you to understand one thing, nation, that there are categories of what that are called, of those that are called Jews or Jewish. And I want to lay that out at the beginning, and then we will get into the depths of this word Jew, J-E-W, Judaism, and Jewishness. It's a lie. But there are four types of Jews or categories whereby they define themselves. I always tell the people there is a website called Chabad. It was developed by the Lubavitchi with the Talmud and all of those books of their literature. literary. And uh, it's a wonderful site because they show you their lies and their misconstrued concepts. But there is a name of a Jew that is called, or the group is called Ashkenazi. You look at the prefix of that word, Ash, A-S-H-K-E, Ash, Nazi, N-A-Z-I. And those were those that lived in Germany uh, on the Rhine River. And I know because I've been on the Rhine River. When I was in the military, we will have NATOs, and all the NATOs nations, we will come together on the Rhine River and practice war games and things like that. That took place during the Vietnam War. I am what they call a Vietnam era veteran. I did not go to Vietnam, but I am classified as that. And so those are called the Ashkenazi. That's what they are called. And then you got what they call the Sephardic, the Sephardic. And these are Jews that they call themselves Jews. They are Spanish Jews. And you will find that prevalent in places like Cuba and places like Spain. And these are called the Sephardic. And these are the ones that were forced to convert unto... Catholicism, or they will be 
thrown out of Spain. That was in like 14, the 1400s, the latter part of the 1400s. And then you got a group of Jews. They are called the Mishrachi. Mishrachi. I'll read this from their own Jewish family search org. At the Mis Misrachi is a Zionist movement founded in 1902, chiefly devoted to the furthering and the integration of Zionism and religious orthodoxy. And those that promote that, they are called the Mishrachi. These are the Jews that promote chiefly Zionism. And we see them in the land they call Israel. And you also see them here in this country. And then there is a type called crypto Jews. Wow. So you know that that is fraudulent and it has no meaning to that. It is called crypto Jews. Crypto Judaism is a secret adherence to Judaism while publicly professing. You do it publicly. You professing to be someone of another religious form, but yet you are a Jew. That sounds quite, quite cowardly to me. I am of Israel. And then this term, it especially applies historically to the Spanish Jews who outwardly profess Catholicism. But they all share in this firm agreement that the Jewish religion is the biblical root, as they would say it, of all things. It is fraudulent. And the term Jew Jewish, it is relative, relative, a new term. It is. It is not something that is ancient. I want to show you the development of that. And I want to use no other scholarship but those that are Jews, born and raised in Jewish home. Well, with the Zerah, the seed of Abraham. Well, Abraham was not called a Jew. It says in Bereshit, Genesis 14, 13, And there came one out that had escaped and told Avram, the Ibri, the Hebrew. The word simply implies one from beyond. And he was from a a beer, from and he dwelt in the plains of Mamre and the Amorites, brother of Eshcol, and the brother of Enir. And there was a confederate with Avraham. There is no place of the origin of the Zerah, the seed of Yisrael, where the word Jew, Jewish, is mentioned. It is a fraudulent term. It is a made-up hybrid identity. Those that say they're Hebrew Israelites and they battle for that identity, I will not. I am of the son of the zero, the seed of Abraham. The, the life of his testimony arise in me, not because the color of my skin, but they know exactly what tribe and all they are from, just like the Jews and that piece of land that we call Israel. I want to read, this is from uh, Hazarat. It is the second largest newspaper in Yerushalayim, beside Jerusalem Post. But this was written in Hazarat, which the paper was founded in 1918. But I want to read this, this article, and I'm going to teach from this, because this is a Jew, raised a Jew, brought up in the Jewish environment and everything. The question is, where did the word Jew come from? 
it says the word Jew ultimate came, ultimate came from Judah, Yehuda, from Judah, an ancient kingdom centered in Jerusalem in the second century before the common era. But how did the kingdom Hebrew name Yehuda, Yehuda in English pronounce Yehuda? How did that begat Jew? That's the question that this author and a man of tremendous scholarship, he said, how did he become that? I have asked that question for so many years. There cannot be a Jew from Yehuda. I can see if they say they were the Yehudanite, Yehudim. How can it be got Jew? How can that word Jew be deducted from Yehuda? It cannot be. It says the earliest reference to the kingdom of Yehuda is in a clay tablet found in Nimrud's. That's where it was found. Nimrud. But yet, this is promoted. This is a word that its implementation in the language that I somewhat speak, it was not founded. And it is not founded in the Torah from Bereshit, Giliana, is that found in Genesis? Oh, I know that it is utilized, but that's the history I want to give you. It speaks here that the 1611, and the Hebrew Israelites live by it. And many of the words, many of the people cannot even tell you the meaning or they don't research. I'm not cascading that community. I've listened to the leaders. You must understand the year 2000. I remember because in America, I was one of the first person to have the internet when it came out in 1982. There were not that many that had the internet. It was only 2 million people in America. And it was all landslide. And I would go to the Center City Library in Charlotte. I would catch the bus. My wife would drop me off. And I would study on a Shabbat. I didn't know about keeping the Shabbat back in the uh, 70s, the latter parts of the 70s or anything like that. I didn't know. And uh, I was very inquisitive to learn. And so when the internet came, then I had a tool. I was as ignorant as all the ones that were on it at that time, but I learned how to utilize it. In the year 2000, listen, my friends, you type on the word Yah, Yahuda, Yahshua, Yahweh, Yahuah, any of those terms, there were only 14,000 documents or sites, or information, a form of information. YouTube wasn't rolling like it is now. It wasn't even up until 1983, I believe. And um, there was not the kind of information you have today. And the last time I looked, there was something close to 500 million. You can't read that. But I could have read those 14,000 documents. That's a fact. I could have read that. And now it is just an explosion. I want to deal with 1611 Kings James. It says here, it was not even called Jew. It was called Ohi. O-E-L-E-W-E-S. I know, but the phonetics of that, the sound, is O-E. O-E, that's what it was called. It was not called you. And I want to quote this here in Yorkanon, John 4 and 9. It says, it's talking about Yehuda. Yehuda here. It is a noun. It is the plural of Ohi, 
and always a member. This is what and how it is divine. And I'm utilizing John 4 and 9 to give us some insight where it talks about eudaios. That is the Latin form of the word, eudaios, of Yahuda. The now plural, it is a plural. It is plural. Either you say a we or a or it is uh, it's uh, it is a we or it is a we yes. a member. This is what it says now. It is a member of the Negroid people of West Africa, living chiefly in the forests of East Ghana, Togo, and Benin, and the language of the people belong to the Chava branch of the Negro Congo family. This is history. And I want to show you every place whereby this has derived the scholarship of a man. It talks about the word Jew. Let me define this for you. It says the word Jew was introduced when? Into the English vernacular for the first time in the 18th century. When the those that are, are called the Sheridan use it in a play, the rival too. She shall have a skin like a mummy, quoting now, and a beard like a Jew. Prior to this use of the word, Jew is in the English language by Sheridan in 1775, the word Jew had not become a word in the English language. 1775, 1611, the KG, and many people don't even know how long it was to get that organized, that book. But there were scriptures before the KJV. It was, and we'll prove that. But I want to read here, this was an article written. It was written in February the 17th, 1991. It is called Haton. Haton. The source of this article is the Phoenix Journal Express. Extra Volume 9, number 6.5, page 11 to, through 15. And so it admonish us to read the complete document. Facts are facts. And this is written by Benjamin Ben H. Freeman. It was written by him. The paperback book was first. And you can find that at www.billio.com. This is the history of Mr. Benjamin. I thought that his reference to everything was thorough. Mr. Benjamin, Benjamin Harris Freedom. He was an American businessman. He was a Holocaust denier and vocal anti-Zionist. He spoke out against the Zionist movements. He was a denier of the Holocaust. Born, this is his pedigree, born in a Jewish family. He converted from Judaism to, to Roman Catholicism outside of the political activism, Freeman was a partner in the dermatological institution and inventor of small businesses. You can find the history of this man. I utilize Wikipedia and other forms, but relative the information that flows on Wikipedia, their researchers and those that will write these articles, they tend not to fudge things as much as other forms of information. Mr. Freeman was born October the 4th, 1890 in New York, New York City. 
He died at the ripe age of 94. He died May 9, 1984 in Garden City, New York. And he, his nationality, he denotes it as an American. So he denounced the Jewish status. He denounced that. But I want to, uh, let's read uh, what he said. Uh, this was a following, an excerpt, direct quote, copy, from the special delivery letter to Dr. Goldstein. Do you know that's Jewish, Goldstein? LLD. He was a doctor of law. He had the honorary law degree. And he also was a person that taught Latin in the concept of law and jurisprudence. So he's writing to a man that was very versed and very qualified. So this article was written in 1954. And I found this article, it was written in the Haaretz of the newspaper of the land of what is called Israel. And it quotes, it is uncontestable fact. He said, you can't even fight this with any form of knowledge. The word Jew did not come into existence until the year 1775. What were they called before that? Tell me. Prior to 1775, the word Jew did not exist in any language. So you cannot tell me, my friends, that in the 1611, that the word Jew was there. I cannot find it from the original writings. You can find that in the KJV and all because it has been instituted, but we'll understand why and the reason of that. It says that the word Jew was introduced into the English vernacular for the first time. Listen carefully. In the 18th century. Not 16th, but the 18th century. When Sheridan used it in a play. I've read that he used that in a play. Prior to the use of this word Jew, in the English language, Sheridan in 1775, the word Jew, had not become a word in the English language. Shakespeare, 1564 to 1616, he never saw or utilized the word Jew, as you will see. He implies that Shakespeare never used the word Jew. In any of his works, the common general belief, to the contrary, notwithstanding, in essence, one of the most poetic, prolific person of that time. And if the word Jew had been that important, he would have used it, utilized that. He never, ever used the word Jew. In any of his works, the common general belief is to the contrary, notwithstanding. In his Merchant of Venice, volume 3, page 61. Shakespeare wrote the following. What is the reason I am a, it was spelled L-E-W-E. -E. Now I know it has the sound of le oui, but it is a we, oui, a we. Oui. That is how the word Jew was. Have not an a we oui eyes. That's when this word was introduced by Shakespeare and the only application of that. You boasting that you are you are a Jew, what does it imply? It has no meaning. It has no substance to its origin. And you that are Hebrew Israelites, it's sad to know that the scholarship among you all, you have not searched the annals of time Smart men, educated, brilliant men. And yet you buy that light that is so superficial. Hear this. In the Latin, St. Jerome, 4th century, 
the Vulgate edition of the New Testament. Jesus is reckoned or referenced by a genitive plural. I did understand that word or so I had to define it. A generative plural is simply this. Any given language that express origin or ownership and possession. As who are the ones that say they possess the word you? But did it, the origin, did it originate among those that say they are Jews and they practice Judaism? That's not even where the word and how it was expressed that the scriptures they use to say that it was. So it must be of the genitive plurative or plural of Ayudus. We're dealing with the Latin and the Greek, Ayudus. And the Gospel of John refers to the inscription on the cross. Ayudiurum. Ayudiurum. It was the fourth century that Saint Jerome translated into Latin the manuscript of the New Testament from the original language which they were written. I want us to understand this. I know how filthy the Roman Catholic Church and all. He said this translation by Saint Jerome is referred to still today as the Vulgate edition by the Roman Catholic Church authorized who use it today. He goes on to say Jesus is referred to as a so-called. Now this is out of the mouth of one that denounced his own heritage what he had been raised in as a Jew for the first time in the New Testament in the 18th century. Jesus is first referenced to as a so-called Jew. He denounced it. Yoshua Hamishir was never a Jew. In the revised 18th century edition, the English language of the 14th century first translated, or the translations of the Brit Hadassah, the New Testament into English, the history of the origin of the word Jew in the English language leaves no doubt that the 18th century Jew is the 18th century contrast and corrupt English word from the 4th century of the Latin language, Ayudias, Ayudias, a corrupt word. You can't say anything when it comes to those that identify as Jews. You look at the basketball player that they have ridiculed and tried to break the strength of the young man. And yet, those that have power, his little bit of money is no power. But the Elon Musk and the Amazons and those whereby Amazon said, we're not taking the movie down. Why is no one raising hell at Amazon? Walmart, they will not even bring Walmart up because you can go, I have search where I can buy the movie. Walmart, Hulu, they take and try to scar a young man. He's old enough to be my son. I'm older than his father. And uh, take this young man and just drag him through the cold because he made a statement. He did not vent any kind of hostile attitude toward those that identify as Jews. I don't identify as no Jew. It is a fraudulent word, just like the N-word they use upon the people of my hue in those days. And so we need young men that will dive into scholarship and history in a way like no other. 
You Hebrew Israelites are not doing that. You young men sit on the corner. It's almost comical. It's comical. I don't spend time watching it, but I have seen it. How they respond to people, how they approach what they say to women, and yet these little Joe Knucker Jitty Bugs will be the first one trying to entertain the woman. The way she dress. And they refer to themselves as the true Jews. There is no such terminology. It's a lie. It is a flat out lie. And you, in that organization, you have enough educated men that can search out the origin of words if a simple, uneducated man like me can do this. You can do a better job than me. It tells us this word, I-U-D-S, in the Latin it was found in St. Jerome's Vulgate edition, but that there is no longer doubt. In essence, this Jew say, it cannot be any other way but that. Because it is not a word. It was a created word that has no history. The origin or the etymology speaks with no history. So how do you define it? You just defined it the way you want to? Or you say come out of the Torah? It's not the truth, man. It is not. This article says that the, the availability of the original manuscripts from the 4th century to the 18th century accurately trace the origin. Do you hear that? It is the etymology, the concept of the word. It accurately, accurately trace the origin and give us the complete history of the word Jew. In the English language, I have searched the records and I can't find it in the form that you that are Hebrew Israelites and you that are Jews that you both lament and debate one another over the word. I will not debate over that. Abraham was not a Jew. And there was no Jew that come out of him. He was not. There was a Yehuda. But there was no Jew at all. And I can see when there is no J in the language, just Yehuda. Let's go that route. And so he gives us from the Latin the forms of this English word Jew. These English forms include a successive. So it has not just been the form of the word Jew from the beginning. Let me just read some. It is Gayu Lu, 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 A, A, W, Lo, like L O W, A, W, A, U. These are the equivalent, the many early English equivalents for Jew. It has a preponderance of evidence here in even the term, it has changed more than a rabbit has changed its coat. Gaius, Gaius, give us, give us, give us. Wow, lose, a you, and then also the final or the finality. In the 18th century, it is Jew. That's only when this term began to gain roots and all of that. Can I say this to us, all you that may listen to this little educational form of teaching? I just want to do this this evening. I want you to take time and just research just a little. Instead of watching television, you can research things. There is a plethora of information on everything. That's why I, I want to deal with these feast days. 
that you are celebrating them so wrong. And there is no sight that shows you uh, the sight here that I keep open. This is one site I keep open because uh, it is called Chabad.org. This where every Jew come. Whether he's Lubavitchi, whether he's Ashkenazi, this where they all come. It has nothing to do with Yah Mashiach. There was one question that one asked, how is it that Passover is always kept in the spring? Something is wrong. And he's absolutely right. Let me say this, and I want to finish this. Let's take the year 2020. You kept the Passover, what, April, what, April, whatever the date was. From 2020 to 2021 to 2021, there expired 353 days. Is that a year according to Hanukkah or even a year? And from 2021, you kept that same time concerning the Equinox. You kept the feast days from 2020 to 2021. You kept that 353. And from 2021 to 2022, you kept that 354. Because every, every seven years, every 19 years, there is what they call an intercalary. There is a second Ada, what they call it. And in that year, you keep it 383 days. Is that Torah? You know it's not. And this is how the Hebrew Israelites do it, same way as the Jews. It is a lie, it is fraudulent, it is fake, and it is false. Let me continue this article. I want to finish this tonight. It says, with the rapid expanding use in the England in the 18th century, for the first time in the history of the general or gen, generality improved printing press. This is when the printing press began to improve. Unlimited quantities of the New Testament were printed. These revised 18th century editions of the earlier 14th century. Now, these are the books that were already in circulation in the 14th century. Well, the KGV, well, the KGV, there were years before we got what they call the 1611, and there were books before that. And that's why the Hebrew Israelites, it's nothing but the KGV. Well, uh, I don't buy that. It says that the New Testament, no, New Testament were printed. These revived 18th century editions of the earlier 14th century, first translated into the English language, were then widely distributed throughout England and to the English-speaking world among the families who had never possessed a copy of the New Testament in any language. In these 18th century edition, the revision, the word Jew appears for the first Time in Eng any English translation. It was until the 18th century. So it was not in the 1611. It was not until the 18th century. The word Jew, as it would use in the 18th century edition, has since continued in use in all editions of the New Testaments in the English language. Thus, the use of the word Jew was stabilized because it would use, but that doesn't mean that there was credibility of this word. It had stabilized stability. And this is what he's writing to Dr. Goldstein, a scholar of law that teach law, the Latin language and all of that. And this is what he says to Dr. Goldstein. As you know, my dear Dr. Goldstein, the best known 18th century edition of the New Testament in English are in the Ryan Duai edition and the King's James Authorized edition. 
The Ryan translation of the New Testament into the English was first in 1582. That's somewhat before 1611. But the word Jew did not appear in it. The King James authorized translation of the Brit Hadassah New Testament into the English was begun in 1604. And the first publication in 1611, the word Jew did not appear in it either. So you that are the proponents of the 1611, and I have a facsimile of the 1611 KJV. I have that. I got a copy when they were rare to find. You can find them on YouTube, uh, Amazon, any of that. And I found a person in Texas. He had a copy. I purchased that for $50. That's been many, many years ago. And I began to examine that. The word Jew did not appear in either. This is it here. Ah, where is my, here it is here. Here is that 1611. I had it for many years. This is the 1611. This is a facsimile. It has everything factual, just like it was when uh, uh, when it was translated. Just like the name Yoshu Yah is here. It's written in the Hebrew language, and most people don't even know that. Let me find this. I want to show you. That was the first thing I noticed when I purchased this. Hallelujah. It has the Apocrypha and all of that. Here in that, in that 1611. But this was the most amazing thing that I found when I got this book. Can you see that? Yeah. It's this word right here in the Hebraic writing. You see that word right? See that right there? The name of the Most High. See it? Right there. They knew his name right there. Right there. You see it? This is the facsimile of the 1611. Now you can find them where's anywhere now. But I had one when there were not many because I knew how to search the internet and I could not find any but that one. I want to conclude here because this is a volume of information uh, to read, but I want to I wanted to really uh, to get the 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 uh, the very identity or in essence the essence of this article that's written to Mr. Goldstein. He was a teacher of law, degree person. He says, "My dear Doctor Goldstein, it is generally accepted understanding today of the English Jew." Yehudin converted the identity, identical implication. He says, inferring, and he, uh, innuendo, all illusion is not true. This is what he said, as both rightly should. It will make no difference which of these two words were used when the reference of Jesus in the New Testament or elsewhere. But the implications infers, and you in your windows today conveys by these two words are as different as black from white. You can't even join them together. The word Jew, the word Jew today is never regarded as synonymous with the word Yahudian or is Yahudin regarded as a synonym for Jew. Do the research. It is not a synonym for the word Jew. Now, I have explained when the word Jew was first introduced to the English language in the 18th century. 
in the 18th century. It is one of the only implication reference and in your windows where Yahudin, however, during the 18th, 19th, 20th century, a well-organized and well-financed international pressure group. And that's what the Jews do. They put pressure on everyone. Look at how they raise hell with this one man that he had to apologize. I would have not. But I understand the young man's circumstance created a so-called secondary meaning for the word Jew among the English-speaking people of the world. And the so-called secondary meaning of the word Jew bears no relationship whatsoever to the 18th century original connotation of the word Jew. It is a misrepresentation. This is from a Jew. It is not from one that looks like me, but this is from one that understand the Jewish household. He was a Jew and raised among that. His father was a was a edu an educated man of high degree. He goes on to say, this is why it was a well planned and well financed worldwide public publicity through every available media by well-organized groups of the so-called or self-style Jews. Look at what happened to that young man, the basketball player. How that every news cycle, I don't watch news. Everything you pick, it was about him. That young man. And that same movie that should kill O'Neill, he played it in his movie houses. Why are they not raising hell with him? Why are they not Bezo and all of those? The Martin family, the Wall Martins. Why are they not raising hell with them? I know every place that I can buy the book or the movie right now. And the only one they raged at was him. This is a world of some of the most blatant hypocrisy of lies. This word has been pushed on the people, which has completely blacked out the original and correct meaning of the word Jew. There can be no doubt about it. Here it is. He's writing to Mr. Goldstein. He said, you know, this is a fact. And the general acceptance secondary meaning of the word Jew today, with particularly no exception, is made up of four almost universally believed theories. The four theories of the so-called self-styled Jew, this is it now, a person who today profess the form of a religion worship known as Judaism, that's the Jew. You can convert, especially Caucasians, but very seldom will they allow a man like me to convert. He will never be a Jew. A person who claimed to belong to a racial group associated with ancient, and the word Shemitic or Semite, was Semite, Shem's name was not, it, it's Shem, S-H-A-M-E. So they must be a Shemite. Those that are sort of associated with them. A person directly and descendants of the ancient nation which thrive in Palestine in biblical or Bible history. And the fourth one, a person blessed by divine intentional design with certain superior culture characteristic denied other racial, religious, and national group all rolled into one. And those are the four identifiers of those that are Jews and what uh, is presented unto us today to, to honor that. I will not honor it. Not me. I will not 
utter it from the Hebrew Israelites or no one else. None. It says this, and I'm going to close here. The present generality except secondary meaning. The word Jew is fundamentally responsible for the confusion of the mind in those that are what called Christian regard it, regarding elementary tenets of the Christian faith. It is likewise responsible today for the very extent for the delusional and the devotion of countless those that are identified as Christian or those of the Christian faith. The implication in furring and innuendo of the word Jew today to the preponderance major of majority of intelligent and informed Christians are contradictory and in complete conflict and indisputable historical facts. Christians who do not and cannot be fooled any longer by the suspect of the Christian cler cleric who continue to repeat and repute and repeat an ad of Nazism, their pet theme song, quote, Jesus was a Jew, is actually now approaching psychosis. In essence, he said they are brainwashed, and this is what is the mandate of all today. There is no identifier in Torah of a Jew, a we, or any. The only identifier of the seed of Avraham, as I began this little simple introductory, there's only one, and that is the one whose seed we are. Bereshit Genesis 14.13 and there came out one that had escaped and told Avram, Avram, Abrach, Avram, Abrach, the Hebrew, the Ibri. And the word Ibri, I B R E E, it has one meaning those, them, one from beyond. The concept of man's identifying factors. So we are the Hebrew Israelites, not a Jew, with the elect seed that is called Yisrael. That's who we are. And those are the people. And Yah's promise to us was not just a little slither of land, but from the great river Nile to Euphrates. Where's the Nile River? And the Hebrews are like, no, 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 it's not. I. They don't want to deal with that. That is so immature and foolish. So you tell me that the sons of Shem did not engage with the daughters of Ham. I know what Yah said. They did. And when Yisrael were captured, lands, they would take wives and concubines. And so where are those children? Where are those children that were produced by a Hebrew man? Where are they? Out of Yehuda, out of Levi and all. Tell me where they are. Where are they? It is one thing that is vitally important. And I want to close with this. I want you to get this scripture. It says this, and this is where the Hebrew Israelites miss the essence. Tibarim chapter 4, verse 27. He gives us a mandate here that he warns us here in Tibarim 4. First of all, he, identify, he identifies his ability to destroy and to consume. But he says something Vital important in verse 26 of the Barim 4 and 27. He said, I call Hashemayim and, and the Eretz to witness against you this day that you shall soon 
He used the word soon now. He used that word zmecha. There's going to be anxiety. It's going to haste upon you. This is what he speaks to us. That you will soon utterly perish from off the line whereunto you go over the Yordan River to possess it. And you shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly, look what he said, you're going to be utterly be shamach, exterminated, destroyed, without any history, annihilated. That is the reference of that word. <clears throat> but he says here in Dibarim 4.27, and Yah, the Most High, shall scatter. This is vitally important. This word here, puts, P-O-O-T-S. He shall cast you abroad. He shall spread you. <clears throat> I ask you all to experiment this summer. Just take what they call the brassica seeds. And they're all the same color. With the, if it's, I don't care what kind of cabbage. I don't care what kind of brassicas, collards, all of those, uh, kale and all, they're all the same size. I did that experiment one day in our tabernacle. And I had seized 12 different kinds of Baraska seeds. And I said, this is the Erath here in the tabernacle. And I put them on my hand. And I flung them. I said, find me one of the seeds. And tell me which kind it is. Tell me if it's a broad leaf. Tell me what kind of cabbage, if it's a red cabbage, you can't. Yah says, I'm going to scatter you. I am going to put. I'm going to scatter you abroad. This is what I, I, I don't get from those that call themselves Hebrew Israelites. I'm the Jews. He used the word among the nations. And the words am. He used that especially when it identifies Yisrael. Or in essence, members, those are the same class, members of one people. He said, I shall scatter you. This is what he says. I shall scatter you among the nations, not a nation, not to America. And you shall be left few. Math. There will not be many. You shall be left few. Few in number. There shall not be many. And then he says this, among the heathens, where Yah shall lead you. He said, I shall scatter you among the heathens of the world, among the nations, not a nation, but among the nations. And it's the same thing in Dibarim, 2864. And Yah shall scatter you among. Look, I, I don't understand that. That that's difficult to grasp. He shall scatter you among whole, all, the whole, the multitude, everything. He shall scatter you among all am, among all people, among every kind, all kind. Among every kind of people. From one end, this is so important. This is the chaseth. From one end. From one end. From that end to that end. And that, when Yah used the word chaseth, he's talking about the extreme. Places where you will never think you go. Up in the northern of Alaska, look at the ex Eskimos and all they're blacker than black. That's a fact. And it's nothing but cold weather. So it has nothing to do with uh, sun or no sun. He said, I will scatter you among, I will scatter, puts you among all people. From one end of the earth, he's talking about the Eretz, not the old land. Where you are, you live in within a circle or an environment. He says the Eretz, as opposed to part. He did not scatter us just in America, 
but all over. And it's one thing that that nation has always done. They've always taken on wives of any kind. I will scatter you among all the people from one end of the earth even to the other. And there you shall serve gods. Every Hebrew Israelite camp got their own gods. Their own identifiers of their god. That's the truth. Just like the Jews. I have no problem with calling them Jews. You shall serve gods which neither you nor your fathers have yada, which they have known, they have learned to know, whom they have even experienced. Even wood and stone. And that's what many are doing. That's why they can belittle one another like, wow, and the words they knew, use. And they say that the word Nige or Nigea, it means that vile, repugnant terminology they call each other. I will never call you that. I don't care if you don't like me, I don't like you, but I will never debase one like that. I want to say this before I close. I was talking the other day with this Caucasian. And I said to him, when I, and this is the way I talk to Caucasians. And I gain favor from them. He will give us favor with all nations, with all people. And I look in his eyes as if when I go a white man, a white boy, I like him. And this man... He's an uneducated Caucasian, but he makes a lot of money. He does. And Yah has given me favor with the man. He knows the people. He does. He got money, believe me. And this is what Yah would do. He's always given me favor with people. I don't care what the skin color was, why I don't play games, and I don't sit around like jackasses laughing and drinking with no man. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. I am going to stop there. May his shalom fill your heart on this night. I say to you all, Yabaru, shalom, shalom.